Last week, there was this experience where my resistance to everything went away. This painful self-consciousness was gone. It was so relaxing. However, to me, it was more positive than negative until resistance came back. So I don't really understand what you mean with life is 50% positive and 50% negative. How would it look like if everyone was enlightened? I would assume that people wouldn't be rude to each other to take things so personally. If you don't think take things personally, how do you still... How do they still hurt? Same. I would think we would treat each other that way, with kindness. Yeah, you got to get over the goodness and the badness, Linda. Treat Humans will treat each other the way they treat each other, and then you've just got to think to yourself, why are you concerned about it now? More than likely, they'll be better, but they're still going to have conditioning. You're still, like with Khaleesi, like she walks around and she wants to be the boss dog. You're still going to have people wanting to be the boss human. And when you have these awakening experiences, they come with lots of bliss in the body because your whole life you've been identified, not your whole life, but most of it you've been identified. So when there's a stripping away of that, lots of bliss in the body, and then your mind is like, ah, makes all these conclusions that it's really blissful and you have no reactions. Reactions are really necessary. You know, and what happens if there is like, um, you know, a big tsunami or big global warming, like everyone's enlightened and then there's big global warming. How would you feel about not having food or letting your kids starve to death? Would you fight for food? Would you go out and kill animals to eat? I suspect that people won't do things evilly, like so they won't do things to like be really nasty to each other like to get revenge but they might get angry in the moment like for sure I get angry in the moment and I see it as past karmas and there can be an improvement on that I also sometimes see it as really important as well to get angry with people like um because then it makes me put up my boundaries and say no out to keep like um as soon as you put yourself public on the internet, you have to have, lot, have very thick skin and lots of boundaries. And when you also have this shift, it can come with lots of bliss. And then you can get into all types of ridiculous situations for not having established good enough boundaries. And I find often that my best way to establish boundaries is when I begin to feel angry, like when somebody when there's an anger that comes up towards someone. It's not necessarily logical or rational. It's just a no. Like in Chinese medicine, they, they say that anger is a positive, not all the time, but can be a positive emotion. But also you can judge that however you want. You can also see it as that I'm not enlightened enough or that there's identification here or there or seeking, whatever you want to think about it. Uh, I don't tend to interpret it these sorts of things as negative. The biggest difficulty we have, including myself, like my personality struggles sometimes with this idea of good and bad as well, especially being an empath. But it's all an idea because all badness that you see is inside your brain. And on the ultimate level, there is no good and bad. Like when you really see this life without any identification, it's totally indifferent. It's not good and bad. So good and bad is only interpreted through the human lens, but that's how we're interpreting. We can say we like the sunset and we don't like the rotting, diseased, dead body that smells. But it's an interpretation. So on the ultimate level, it's free. It has none. But everything that you see that's good and bad, like everybody's anger tantrum or feistiness or difficulty or things you don't like about people is all happening inside of your brain because your brain is interpreting it. Consciousness is indifferent. Consciousness doesn't care if that person's getting angry or not. It's only on the human level, fitting in with the human dynamics and structures, which are really limited and really bonkers and really crazy, like all the ideas we have about how we have to be. Like, why not, like, feistiness and fighting together? Not fighting like wars, but why not having an argument now and then? Why not arguing about which way the sofa goes or which way the sofa looks better? Only because it makes you feel pain and you don't want it. And you're like, no, no, we must get rid of all badness. This idea of perfection 
is simply an idea. And when you have these awakening experiences, that is such a big illusion that you're always going to be in bliss. The bliss comes from the ecstasy that runs through the body of the relaxation of it. And then it's like, yeah, all the other feelings are totally exterminated from just this bliss. You're like, And then a big truck comes and runs you over your leg. Oh, I forgot I was sitting, standing in the middle of the road when all this bliss came. Just went a mile a, mile a dozen. I can't remember that saying now. 